This is really important. The search continues for two local children who've been missing since Saturday. Police believe that 40 year old James Lee DiMaggio is on the run with 16 year old Hannah Anderson. Joining me with the latest on the case is one of the investigators, Lieutenant Glenn Gian Antonio. Welcome to primetime. Thank you. Um, this is a bizarre, bizarre case, and I, I really feel for this poor girl who's been kidnapped and what happened to her mother and alleged brother, I guess we don't know for sure yet, all the details exactly. aren't out. Tell, get, tell us what's going on, because everybody got that Amber Alert, right. which I'm really happy about, but get, you know, get us up to date. Well, we've been following in, uh, leads that have been coming out since literally minutes after the, after the Amber Alert went out. Um, I was actually sitting in the Boulevard substation when the Amber Alert went out, and within two minutes, uh, two people had called the Boulevard substation, even though that wasn't the number on the Amber Alert. So the local people there were saying, well, wait, I have some information. Um, we've received hundreds of uh, tips. We're following up on every one of them that can be followed up on. Uh -huh. uh, some of them have been very credible tips. Unfortunately, none to this point have actually come up with a positive sighting of them. Uh, they're, and that could just be that it was the people, it may have been them that they saw, but they were gone by the time the officials got there. How many tips have you received so far? Because people are helping, they want to help. Yes, we've been receiving tips from literally across the country, from the East Coast, West Coast, North, South, uh, everywhere with possible sightings and other people just calling in information. Uh, I don't have a, an exact number, I would say hundreds easily. So the Amber Alert was only statewide, correct? Initially it was statewide. And as soon as you got um, tips that they cross the border, then it became a national Amber Alert? Uh, no, that work? it's actually not national at this point. Uh, at the moment right now, uh, there's an Amber Alert in British Columbia, Washington State, Oregon, Nevada, and California, and Mexico. Uh, so we're Because those are where people have called or, and said they have seen this car and this man. They would, we're assuming that those would be the most likely places where mm -hmm. they would be. Um, other states don't have a, an Amber Alert. Their Amber Alert system doesn't allow them to... Uh, have an Amber Alert activated for an out-of-state or out of state abduction. And I have to tell you, some people were annoyed by it, but I'm like, are you kidding me? If you could save a life, that annoys mm -hmm. you. How many texts do you get a day? That annoys you? Right. You're going to save a child's life. We have received a couple complaints about it. Uh, this was the first time it went out wirelessly to phones, uh, the first time in state history since it's a relatively I love it. new program. It was great, but uh, we had one gentleman complain that um, he was driving and they don't, we shouldn't be having people check their text messages while he's driving. And another gentleman was upset that he was woken up by it. I, I can understand both of those, but uh, I can't. we're and trying to save somebody's those life. Guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. Why those guys even walk the planet is beyond me. I don't know. So you're worried that he has explosives. Why is that? We're concerned based on some of the evidence that we've covered in the mm -hmm. case and unfortunately I can't go into any details on it but uh, we are concerned that he may be setting either uh, incendiary or explosive booby traps either at on his vehicle if it's abandoned for, for example or uh, wherever he's been hiding out or wherever he's been um, again I can't go into detail as to why we believe that's a possibility, but uh, we think it is definitely a public safety can, issue. Can I speculate? The house got burned up. Did, was it, did, they, did he blow it up? I mean, I, I'm speculating. You I can mean, speculate. Don't I let can't. the blonde hair fool you. But I would assume that would be one of the reasons they would think, well, if he's using explosives to blow up the house, get, burn it down, maybe he'll continue to do that. That's a good speculation. And that is good for you to speculate on. <laughs> I, however, cannot. He will not deny or, you know. Exactly. Okay. Well, it's so sad, but there, we, is there any tips that this girl's safe? Do we know, have we seen, has anybody seen her alive? We have not had any confirmed sightings of either DiMaggio, Hannah, or Ethan. Um, right now, we're still holding out hope that Ethan is, has been abducted and is safe. Um, we haven't ID'd the remains. Okay, so let's get this straight, because I was having this discussion <laughs> with my producer. I said, wait a minute, he's got a boy and a girl, and they said, no, the boy is possibly already deceased, deceased right. and burned up in the house. So there were three kids. There were two children. Okay, so. Well. I, so give it, so, and I'm telling the viewers, look out for a guy with a 16 year old daughter, which we've been saying the whole time. And yesterday mm -hmm. I said it was a boy who was the Hannah and her brother, Ethan. What is it, what is the facts here? Uh, Christina has, Christina and Brent, Brett have two children, Christina, okay. I'm sorry, uh, Hannah and Ethan. Okay. Um, both children are missing. We have 
uh, remains in the burned residence. Uh, they are consistent size-wise with what an eight-year-old boy, which is how old Ethan, wa uh, Ethan was. Um, so it's, they're consistent. However, we haven't been able to positively identify them. We haven't been able to do any d DNA testing. We're or working dental. on it as yeah. we speak. Um, the body was very badly burned, so getting a, a DNA samples being very difficult. Um, we, it's possible it's not Ethan. That's the re the remains are not uh, that of Ethan. Um, in which case. DiMaggio would most likely have both Anna, Hannah and Ethan. So we have to be on the lookout for both. But Either then or, if it yes. wasn't Ethan, I would think another mother would be coming forward as a missing child. And that's true. And we don't have any other reports that would match an eight-year-old or close to an eight-year-old uh, missing child at this point. Can you tell us his relationship with his family? Uh, Jim's, I'm sorry. Because uh, he talked about, the father talked about it. We kind of reiterate right. what things going on there. Um, DiMaggio has been a close family friend. Uh, DiMaggio and the children's father were close friends for over 20 years. Um, they, I've heard they've been described as basically best friends. Uh, they were very close. The children considered him an uncle. They would be over at his house all the time. They did stuff together, um, go on trips together. Um, that's why this is so unusual. From what we understand, it's very out of character. Uh, for DiMaggio to have done something like this. Um, from all accounts, he doesn't seem like he, had, he was a bad person or um, would have done anything that would have led us to believe that he would possibly have done something like this. However, uh, the evidence in this case is pretty substantial uh, to show that he's the one that did it and he wasn't the victim of foul play and somebody else would have done this. We strongly believe he's the suspect. Is he single, married? Uh, he's divorced. He's divorced. Does he have children of his own? He does not. It's a it's a tough case. It's very tough. Yeah. Um, is there any chance that maybe, and he probably, I don't know if you're even allowed to say this, that, that maybe he had feelings for the mother because he didn't attack the father, his friend. He attacked mm -hmm. the mother. I haven't heard mm -hmm. uh, that as a possible motive or an issue. Um, everyone we've spoken to who know them, and we've spoken to literally everybody we could possibly find who mm -hmm. knew either one of them, um, all reports are that they were platonic. They were just very good friends. They were close family friends and had been for 20 plus years. I just, it's just so bizarre, but he yes. has, he didn't, he killed the, possibly killed the son, he killed the mother, and he didn't kill the girl. So maybe there's something with the 16 year old daughter. Maybe he's and a pedophile. We have heard uh, a report that would, uh, lead us to think that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. It is a possibility. We're not discounting any issues at this point. We're looking with completely wide open eyes at every yeah. possibility. Can you confirm or deny whether Di DiMaggio went on vacation with a teenage daughter? I'd rather not discuss issues between And you can see if he's a family friend why the parents thought it would be a safe thing to do. But, oh my but gosh. But I can't really talk about it. You can't deny it either. It doesn't matter. We just got to find this evil guy. Yeah, and that's I mean, about the bottom line. I mean, this poor girl. Maybe the mother found out. Maybe something like that. Who knows? Anything's it's possible at this point. Exactly, and we're not discounting any possibilities whatsoever. Uh, one thing we're actually starting to focus a little more on, um, literally the, the manhunt is nationwide and yeah. up in Canada and Mexico. We don't know where they are, but one thing we're starting to focus a little more on is that uh, DiMaggio was an avid outdoorsman and a camper. And yeah. being that there's been no positive uh, sightings of them out in public, Probably there is a possibility he's out camping somewhere in the woods, not necessarily in this area, but somewhere, you know, where nobody would see them. Well, not too long ago, we had a cop killer out there that was, you know, hiding in someone's cabin. So anything's That's possible. True. Yeah, exactly. But thank goodness. Now, who issues the Amber Alert? When does, who makes that decision? The Highway Patrol uh, is the agency in California that actually activates the Amber Alert system. What, uh, the agency that's dealing with the uh, child abduction case, we call the uh, Highway Patrol officer in charge of the Amber, Amber Alert system. We basically brief them on the case and mm -hmm. they make the determination as to whether or not it fits the criteria to activate the system. In this case, obviously mm -hmm. it did and it was activated. Uh, we've then spoken with uh, law enforcement from other states and they've also activated their systems. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. I think it's a great system. Shame on any of you who complain about it. When you save a kid's life, you save a kid's life. You do everything you can for our mm -hmm. children. In a story. 
End of story. Um, is there anything that, any message that you have for our viewers at this point? We're doing everything we possibly can. Yeah. We've got teams of uh, investigators working on this, both our department, the FBI is working very closely with us. Um, we're doing everything we possibly can. Mm -hmm. What I'm thinking this case is going to come down to, so to a good resolution, is for somebody in the public to see something and call it in. So yeah. I'd like to encourage the members of the public to, if you see something, you think it's suspicious, you think it might be them, just call. If it turned out, turns out it's not them, no harm, no foul. Yeah. Um, we've got enough investigators that we can investigate each one without overtaxing us. Uh, we'd rather have clues that or hints that or tips that don't work out than to miss one that might be the one we need. Yeah, we got to find this guy. Yeah. Thank you for all your help and You're any welcome. new developments, please come back on prime time and okay. you know the UTs behind you. We help. We, we appreciate definitely that. Definitely will help all and we can. And just this the media attention is great. Yeah. That's exactly what we need. Thank you so, so. much. You're welcome. Thank all you. All right, thank you.